signature sounds like that kind of mm -hmm. built like they are in the record. <laughs> but that's a sound that has to be right. Are we rolling? Rolling. Okay, now we can finally actually talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Zach Comtois. I am so glad you're here. Your job as a professional guitar player is so fascinating. To start off, I have a very vivid memory of being 13, being in a guitar shop, yep. and talking to the owner about like what being a professional guitarist is like. I remember him saying, someone's gonna be Britney Spears' guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> and that someone is you. Amazing. Yeah, you got the job. I did. What is it like being a professional guitar player in that world? It's pretty great. Um, <laughs> I guess the first thing I would really love to know is like, how did you end up with this job? I was yeah. playing in a hair metal tribute band. <laughs> I didn't know this at the time, but the keyboard player of that band was the musical director for Britney Spears. And what? Yeah. Success is where preparation meets opportunity, yeah. right? All I knew about these guys was that they were killing players. Yeah. And I just had fun playing that kind mm -hmm. of music. Shred metal music from the 80s and 70s play all of the notes on the entire fretboard. <laughs> the keyboard player of the band started to like put me through little tests. Text me and be like, oh, tonight, can you learn this song, this song, this song, this song, this song? Like, give me like five songs to learn. And I'd be like, uh, sure. Auditioning me without me knowing it. Wow. Unbeknownst to me, he had already kind of been in touch with management and production mm -hmm. for the Vegas residency, which mm -hmm. started in 2013. And is that when you joined the band? That was when I joined, yeah. So oh. he reached out to me. He's like, hey, you're the new guitar player for Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm not kidding. Can you be in Vegas by December 1st? And I was wow. like, wow, oh, totally. That's amazing. Yeah. What is a musical director? They're the person who kind of steers the band in the direction that the artist wants to go. And I know a lot of times there's some crossover. Like there are some bands where the musical director is the artist. He would essentially tell us, all right, here's the arrangement that we're looking mm -hmm. at for this song. Uh, I, I know we've been filming for a while, guys, but we've got two brunette what guys with beards and black t-shirts. Do we want to do something oh, about that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is just like the, we're in the music industry. Musicians <laughs> wardrobe. Right? We wear black shirts. Yeah. Help if one of you changed to yeah, yeah, I'll, I should I should change. Okay. So how much say do you have in the band? Whatever the music, musical yeah, director yeah. said, that's kind of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. If you have a solo, like you can do that differently. I imagine your setup is a same set every single night. There's so many different elements to yeah, it. Yeah, it's such a big it's, production. Yeah, you can't just go up there and jam. For the most part, the show is pretty consistent because again, like in a Vegas residency, yeah. you're getting new audiences every night. Yeah. So you want to show them the show that you've prepared. Mm -hmm. Once we got to rehearsal, it was just the band mm -hmm. for like two weeks. And what, what was that like? Was it a much different experience than rehearsing with the hair metal band? No, not <laughs> no. really. Not until you're on stage yeah. and you're in front of that crowd that you're like, whoa, this is different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any gig I've done my entire career, whether it's a backyard birthday party for 20 people or mm -hmm. it's 60,000 people in a park yeah. in the middle of Israel, like I try to approach it the same way every time. Mm -hmm. Would that be your biggest show then? Probably. 60,000? Really yeah. We played a show in, in Tel Aviv mm -hmm. in 2017. There were so many people there that Israel rescheduled their elections because they were concerned <laughs> that there was going to be like an impact on the outcome. Lack of like voter turnout. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other level of show. How big is the band? It was a four piece. Four piece, really? Yep. yep, so keys, guitar, drums, bass. It was a rock band setup. When I came out to do that gig, I brought an SG and a Marshall just because that's the world that I come from. So then when I started getting into the multi-effects processor thing, the way that I had it set was it would be one button per song and I wouldn't have to worry about any like pedal tap dancing. And then how many guitars do you go through? It depends on the artist. There's a blues artist named Kev Mo who mm -hmm. I've played with. With him, it's like you grab and go, right? Mm -hmm. There's one guitar and then you're there for the set. On a pop gig, you might be playing a clean song that sounds better with single coils, and yeah. then you might have a rock and roll song that sounds better with humbuckers. Mm -hmm. So I would have three guitars behind me. Do you ever get any solos in the Britney set? Yeah, but again, I try not to go completely overboard. They're there to see the artist. Yeah. So try to play something that's musically satisfying yeah. and melodic. What's it like playing in an arena every day? I get off the bus. Usually by then they're setting up the stage and you have a set time for sound check, warm up. Mm -hmm. kind of keep everything loose. That's a tough thing about a pop tour is you're playing so much, you can sort of get nagging aches and pains and yeah. things like that. It's but 90 straight minutes every night, right? Yeah, you know, you have dinner, you have whatever your pre-show routine is. Maybe you watch like one episode of like 
some TV show that like gets you in the right headspace, get into show clothes, and then curtain falls and it's showtime. That must be pretty intimidating. I don't know if it ever becomes like a nine to five. I certainly yeah. never felt that way. Maybe we take a look at your rig then. Okay. Because I want to see what you play on stage. Cool. This is the Neural Quad Cortex. From a practical standpoint, it's light and it's easy to use. <laughs> <laughs> is this your whole rig? This is my whole rig right now. Even if we weren't doing this video, I'd be excited to show you the patches because I think they're rad. <laughs> <laughs> so you're constantly changing the patches then. You find one and then the musical director will approve it. You want to make sure that you're in the right sonic space. I sort of function best in the like 212 cab, high mid. It's not so much about being louder than everybody else. It's mm -hmm. just like fitting in the right space where you can be heard. I just try to steer clear of the vocal. No matter yeah, of what. course. Yeah, because that's number one. With something like this, it's so much more convenient to just bend over and be like, I'm gonna switch to an AC30 instead of like bringing in an actual old yeah. amp. These things are getting so good now that yeah. you don't really need a real amp. I swear you so can't people tell the really difference. Hate yeah. for saying that. So I, people, listen, yeah. I mean, I played tube amps for years and I still mm -hmm. do on occasion, yeah. but like these sound good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's play the guitar. Okay. Here's some Britney riffs. Yeah, right. I feel like everyone's always looking for the most versatile guitar in mm -hmm. the world. I always come back to the SG. Yeah. You do a country gig with it, you could do a blues gig with it, you can do a pop gig with it. And it looks cool. Which, let's be honest, is the most yeah. important thing. Mm -hmm. Do you switch between the pickups a lot? Not really. Yeah. I have the volume down all the way mm -hmm. on the neck pickup, so it functions as a kill switch. If there's a hard ending on a song, instead of like muting it with my hands, I'll just and then you know, switch the pickup selector so that it kills the signal and it's nice and tight. What gauges are you using? Do we want to go down this route? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, these are 10 to 46. I recently switched to nines just yep. to make it easier. When I started playing, I started playing 13s. Why were you doing like, the drop B or something? No, it was in standard. But Jeez. it was like that Stevie Ray Vaughan thing of like, yeah, if you want to be a real guitar player. the same thing. Yeah. After playing for a while, my hand would hurt. Yeah, your fingers and, would be purple. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then I was like, what am I, what am I doing? Yeah. So now I just go easy, I go nines on everything. I play nines for a little while, but I think when I get on stage and the energy kicks in, I was putting them sharp because I was yeah. kind of playing yeah, that makes a lot of sense. with too much energy. I started using tens in 2010 mm -hmm. and I I never looked back. You didn't so, go to the 11s and 12s and 13s. Yeah. You'd be on 21s now. Right, exactly. Can you imagine? <laughs> it should be like telephone wire. Do you tune down to drop B in the show at all? Or is it just standard throughout? There were a couple drop D songs. A lot of those tunes were written on keyboards. Even if I'm not playing low D, mm -hmm. like having access to the E flat could be valuable. A lot of times in a pop song, you're playing big choruses, a lot of thick and meaty chords as like mm -hmm. a steady foundation. I want to hear some of the stuff that you play, so let's get you plugged in. Okay. A slightly gained up crunch sound is kind of like my default. Something like this. It's just got presence to it. It's not overwhelming. A lot of the tones that I use are like 212 cabs just because I find that they don't muddy up the bass. Just in general, I try to like make sure that there's no competing frequencies with the mm -hmm. other musicians. You know, there's a lot of synths, yeah. there's a lot of vocals, especially in pop music, there's a lot of harmonies. Usually the next one is like a boost. Mm -hmm. The same setup, and I'll throw in a distortion pedal. <laughs> I try to build in volume rises on my end yeah. so that the front of house guy doesn't have to worry about it. If I'm switching to a signature sound, like the guitar lick from Toxic, you want to be able to access that uh -huh. signature sounds like that kind of mm -hmm. build like they are in the record. How do you play that riff? It's in C. So at the root, the yeah. flat seven, the fifth, and... But you're doing like a, third. what's that high note there? That you're just going... That one? Yeah. And again, so root, fifth, mm -hmm. and then third. It's okay. every yeah, everyone expects there's that only, one. There's right? only so much we can do until YouTube comes after yeah. us. <laughs> but that's a sound that has to be right. Like, yeah. there are certain parts of the show where you're like, you have to have the sound that's just like... Yeah. yeah. Like it was that kind uh -huh. of stuff. And then in the chorus is when you get the... So. <laughs> yeah. Can I try that riff? Sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're pretty close. Nice. 
Did you slide into him? <laughs> Musical director be like, he can't slide into those notes. Does it get that specific or? Yeah, well, on a part like that, for yeah. sure. It's such a signature part. For sure. Yeah, there's only, ooh, I messed up. I Dude. lost, I got fired. Come right on there. now. I definitely got fired yeah. from the gig for that. I just wanted to play that riff real quick. Oh, it's a sorry. simple one. It's a simple but satisfying. Yeah. That's the thing about pop music. Yeah. It's simple but satisfying. Uh, mm -hmm. <sighs> Learning guitar is the best. <laughs> which is a good segue to a word from our sponsor, which is, again, just me. I just made a new guitar course called Five Songwriting Cheat Codes for Guitar Players, which is a lot of what I've learned from doing the album in a day videos. So whether you're a beginner or you've been playing a long time and just need a kickstart of inspiration, this course is for that to get you writing songs right away. Even every cheat code is a song in an hour challenge and it's really fun. And that's all on Guitario. That's part of the Guitario membership. And also my whole beginner guitar course, Guitar Quest is also within the Guitario membership. And that is a full beginner guitar course. That's also a full on adventure. <laughs> super, super proud of both of those. And yeah, I wanna use this time right now to encourage you to play guitar and try out the instrument. Um, whether you do it with my courses or not, uh, because guitar is the best. <laughs> but if you do want to learn with me, those are linked at the top of the description. Uh, all right, sponsorship over, back to Britney Rips. I'd love to hear some other ones though, if you have them. What's your favorite song to play? Oh, give me more. A hundred oh, really? percent. Yeah, yeah. That was great. That would be a driven gain type sound, mm -hmm. and it's a drop D. The thing I like about that song is it's just got the like... So that's like the riff, yeah. and then during the verse, it's... <laughs> and I think it sounds like, like a system of a down song. It's so cool! <laughs> <laughs> four, four, seven, seven, six, 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 zero, zero. <laughs> you want to try that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is a system of a down song. It's so hard to not go to that. Even just here playing it, it's kind of hard to not continue improvising. That's what we were can't talking do that. About. Yeah. yeah, it's all about like sitting in that groove. It's yeah. so easy, especially when you're playing with a ton of distortion. It's just throw in stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you teach me uh, Hit Me Baby one more time? Sure. A lot of the songs were sort of structured to be more rock and roll yeah. songs. So that for me was... Yeah. I feel so, like we can get away with that on YouTube. <laughs> I'm, I'm not hearing the melody. For some reason, I keep thinking, first I was afraid, and then I'm like, I don't mind going to that. But that's the melody that's going through my head right now. This is an interesting experiment to try to do it without like getting a YouTube copyright strike. Yeah. yeah. I'm a slave to you. The cool thing about Slave was it was like super distorted. Yeah. I bet. The guitar was only really in the B section. Love using those chords. Just to provide like a meaty sort of like thick like yeah. underbelly. When you get hired for these jobs, you're hired for a year on this thing, and then you're you're hired for this tour. You might get you know an offer for a one-off. Mm -hmm. You know you're doing like one TV date or one appearance. Yeah. Have you done a lot of those? I've done a few. Yeah, yeah, I've done some TV dates. You might get one show, and then they're like, oh, can you do this other show? And it, it might spiral. For the residency, all right, we're going to do two months. Oh, we're going to yeah. do two more months. And that seems really unique with that. Five years of work in the music business is, for me, it was a blessing. To have that kind of longevity with an artist was 
really great. Tell did, me about the other artists you work with too. So I did a TV date with a rapper named Bryce Vine. I was sort of holding on this one groove for the whole song. Yeah, I And imagine. that is like a challenge in and of itself. <laughs> you just hone in on like where that riff fits into the groove. Mm -hmm. And I love doing stuff like that. So many of those rap guitar riffs, like the Eminem, the... Yeah. <laughs> It's so satisfying, uh -huh. right? You hear someone play that and you're like, oh, that's lose yourself, yeah. right? <laughs> a super simple part where you can really land the plane. There must be a lot of pressure too with the TV gigs because it's you practice and then you do it once and that's it. If you're doing a live performance at like the Billboard Music Awards, mm -hmm. you shed a tune over and over and over yeah. and over and over again and then you play it once and that was it that was mm -hmm. your chance it's need based right yeah. like someone needs a guitar player who can play this kind of style mm -hmm. or someone knows me and they're doing a country gig you, you played a lot of a country, country gigs i haven't done a lot of it yeah. but it's fun i mean there's a ton of guitar solos in country <laughs> <laughs> like if you get an offer even if it's a little out of your comfort zone musically, if it's a type of genre you haven't played, mm -hmm. say yes, you know, put in the time and that experience is gonna carry you to the next one mm -hmm. because maybe there's someone in the band who is looking for somebody. Say yes and be on time. Yeah, well, yeah. be on time. <laughs> yeah. Always be on time. time Always be early. <laughs> we could end it with what music are you inspired to play when you're not playing with these artists, when you can just play whatever you want. 2020 was like a really weird year for me creatively. Yeah. Cause yeah. all of a sudden, like all the touring and all of the TV gigs and all of that stuff were just stopped. Mm -hmm. My best friend Mark and I have been talking about starting an original project for a decade. Mm -hmm. Now we have this project called Better Fires. Of everything I've done, it's it's the thing I'm the most proud of. We're actually in the studio right now making the record, so. Awesome. Maybe by the time this video comes out, it will be linked at the top of the description. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanna hear more of Zach, that'll be there. Thank you so much for being here. This been Thank fantastic. you, Rob. I really appreciate you. I appreciate it, man. And you can subscribe to me too if you want. <laughs> <laughs>